Hello everybody and welcome to another top five board gaming video. It may not technically be the first of the month, but it's close enough and so we're going to get into five more games that I am really excited about that have either recently been released or are coming out or are on Kickstarter or all sorts of other things like that, which I probably won't get as I say with my cleverly hidden recently arrived Kickstarters. Yes, I am very sneaky. But that said, as always, I want to hear what you guys have to say. It's already spring, which means that summer is just around the corner, and that means convention season is coming, which means that we're seeing a lot of really fun and awesome announcements, not to mention some really cool games being on Kickstarter. So I would love to hear from you what are games that you're looking forward to and why. Put it all in the comments below. But with that, we're going to get started with April's number five. At number five, I've got E.T., the extraterrestrial light years from home. Most importantly, I am shocked that it has taken this long to see a board game about E.T. My guess is that they got scared off after that terrible NES game, but that's beside the point. This game is a cooperative game where the idea is that you're trying to help out E.T., contact his home world, and the fact is that apparently it's pretty good. I personally have not played it, but it seems like it's pretty awesome, and that's relatively rare amongst video and TV IPs. And so so seems like it could be good. So all in all, E.T. the Extraterrestrial Light Years From Home is my number five. At number four, I've got Let's Go to Japan. This is a Kickstarter game where the idea is that you're playing as a tourist who is trying to tour Japan. And it's pretty awesome in my opinion because frankly, I want to visit Japan. And the idea of this game is that you've got a bunch of really popular and famous tourist spots that you're trying to go to. You draw the cards and you try to play them so that you can get as many points as possible. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. Seems like a fun concept. And on top of that, you get to learn a little bit about the country as well. So it's kind of nice. That said, let's go to Japan is my number four. At number three, I've got Distilled. This is a game that is very reminiscent of Viticulture, but in this case, you're making spirits rather than wine. The idea is that you are using resources to upgrade your capabilities, make your stills better, all of that kind of stuff, and then you send things to the warehouse to allow them to age so that you can sell them at a higher margin and all of that kind of stuff. So you've got push your luck elements with aging things a little bit longer, resource management to make sure that you are able to buy upgrades and make sure that you can get the best things that you possibly can at the beginning seems like a really interesting game and like i said something that'll be familiar to a lot of people distilled great game or what seems to be a great game my number three at number two i've got earth and first and foremost can we address why it is that earth has not been a game yet apparently this is the first game named earth which doesn't make sense, but that's beside the point. This is an engine building slash tile placement slash terrarium terrain building game that we have seen quite a bit over the last couple of years, but this is taking it to a bit of another level in complexity. You've got a lot more tile placement. You've got very specific flora and fauna that you can place. You've got engine building and management that you have to attend to, all of that kind of stuff. On top of that, you have a solo mode that you're able to play, and apparently it's really good. Good. There's great chatter about it. I personally have not played it, but seems like a wonderful game, and I look forward to someday hopefully playing it. Earth, my number two. At number one, I've got City of the Great Machine for one main reason. It really reminds me of the old game Paranoia. So in this particular game, it takes place in Victorian steampunk style times with the idea being that a massive citywide AI is running the entire thing and people are not too happy about it. So the idea is that you are playing as rebels that are trying to overthrow the AI. But the kicker is that you can play it one of two ways. You can play it either completely cooperatively against a fully AI controlled bad guy that is moving and doing stuff or you can play it as an asymmetric game where you have several people playing as the rebels and one person controlling the AI. I absolutely love the concept. I love the idea. And just like all the other games, it's gotten some wonderful chatter. This particular one is right up my alley thematically, especially. I love the sci-fi and steampunk aspect. Seems like it's an awesome game. City of the Great Machine, my number one. 
Well, everybody, that's going to be it for me. I hope that you enjoyed this video on my top five games that I'm looking forward to for April, whether they are recently released, soon to be released, Kickstarters, re-releases, or whatever it happens to be. I'm excited for them, and of course, there is never any shortage of these games and new games to come, because there's always going to be more games that we can have on our shelves. But that said, as always, you know, I love to hear from you all. Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. What are some games that you're looking forward to and why? I would love to hear it. And what have you gotten to the table recently? Love to hear that too. Anything and everything, just put it all down there. That said, if you haven't done so already, please also take a look at my social media pages where you can interact with myself and my channel in a bunch of fun ways. But with that, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.